Good afternoon, friends. So great to be here. Great day. I enjoy so much learning from everyone in this industry. Uh, I have had the incredible fortune of being part of a, an amazing marketing team in Greater Miami and Miami Beach for nearly two decades. And one of the things that I remember mostly is my first day when I walked into that office, July 31st, 2002. And next to my desk was a box that had just arrived from the printer. And when I opened that box, it was a little four by nine brochure that was the gay and lesbian guide to Greater Miami and the beaches. And I thought to myself, yeah, I'm gonna like it here. <laughs> so from that, you know, at, to that point, I thought it was a great thing because I had traveled pretty often to, at that point, and I relied on Spartacus. That's the only thing that I used to rely on. And I see Dirk arrived, so thank you for carrying on that legacy for us, uh, Dirk. Um, shortly after I arrived in the fall of 2002, we started to plan our first uh, advertising campaign. Now, a lot of the things I'm gonna share with you, we wouldn't necessarily do now. This is a trajectory of our experiences. So in the 90s, South Beach in particular, became the backdrop for a lot of the fashion shoots. You would see Calvin Klein, you would see Versace, and the whole story, we would call that the Versace era. And that's what influenced this photo shoot in the fall of 2002. So really it was a very editorial campaign. What we did back then, because we didn't have the resources we have now, we don't have groups like this, we don't have the connections to the community. What we did then was say, hey, you gentlemen go over here and let's do this scene with you. And ladies, you go over there and we'll do this scene with you. So our messaging was very suggestive. And even though it was very effective in the sense that it got a lot of attention in our feeder markets, it wasn't genuine. And we really struggled with that at the beginning and we wanted to continue to reach this audience, but we had to start this way to test the waters. So what happened is as we started to plan our next advertising campaign, we were much more comfortable with reaching the community. We started to get feedback of what exactly was the overall feeling of our messaging. So we developed an advertising campaign called Express Yourselves. And with that, we did embrace the community. We reached out and engaged local community to come in and participate in this photo shoot. And that's how it started to evolve into the next level when we realized that our message had to be authentic. So with this campaign, this actually ran as a full page ad in the New York Times to celebrate marriage equality in the state of New York and inviting people to marry in New York and come spend their honeymoon in Miami. Also with these uh, two young ladies, that were, we started to explore a lot of composite images in photography. So it was, you know, superimposed over a, a party in a pool, but that really was the, the next iteration of our campaign. Before we launched what, we be, what became one of our most popular campaigns, the It's So Miami campaign. And with that, we really continued to explore this compositing of images. And by then we were full on speaking to the community. This is one of our largest events, Winter Party, it takes place in the spring on the beaches in South Beach. So we really wanted to continue our commitment to speaking to this segment and in this space. That transitioned into speaking and, excuse me, showcasing our neighborhoods and all of the different aspects that Greater Miami and Miami Beach offers. For a while there, all eyes were on South Beach. That's where everything was happening. That is, our, there's still our hub, but there are so many other things that there is to discover in Greater Miami and Miami Beach. Wynwood, for instance, a neighborhood that in 2009, there was nothing there, and is now one of our most popular neighborhoods in the destination. And Bell Harbor, of course, uh, a lot of great designer shopping happening in Bell Harbor, so we wanted to showcase that as well. And from that, we left people behind, and we started to explore our neighborhoods. This again is Wynwood, and we did this just you know, suggesting and using uh, the rainbow colors in different locations to express or to, or to show that the, the community was welcome there. A little bit of South Beach and some of the rainbow cocktails there. So we continued on with that. And Coconut Grove. 
uh, as well with some, you know, sailing in some of the outdoor activities. But what happened about three years ago is a shift at the Greater Miami Convention and Visitors Bureau, and they hired a fabulous new director of LGBTQ marketing. Yeah. <laughs> and I said to them that what we had been doing to that point was great, and that I had learned a lot being part of that process, but step, stepping from creative services now into marketing and this particular space, I wanted to do more. So what I did was the first year, I went out and I met the community. And, and I'm a resident of Miami Beach, but I never took the time to do that because it wasn't my job. So what happens to us, we, we just get closed in in our spaces. It happens to the best of us, but we're just not familiar with the rest of the destination, but it was not my job. So I had to go out and I started to go and meet all different members of the community. From the trans community, the gender fluid community. I wanted to speak to families. There's a large segment of LGBTQ families that's happening now and I wanted to find out where they went, what they enjoyed about the destination, where they hung out on the weekends, where they took their friends when they came to visit. Because I believe that there are no greater ambassadors for the destination than those of us that live, work, and play in Miami. So it's really a simple foundation as I build the next phase of our marketing strategy and our marketing message. So as I went through, it took almost about a year of intelligence gathering talking to different, in different neighborhoods as well. And at the end, I ended up with this amazing collection of 47 individuals that I wanted to engage to come, join me in representing what is Greater Miami and Miami Beach. So now that I had the diversity in the group, I can tell you that, of course, we had racial diversity. That, that was an obvious you know, tick. But I wanted also to represent body type diversity. South Beach had the reputation of beautiful models on the beach, and a lot of people would not feel comfortable. I wanted to make sure that there, everyone knew that there are bodies of every shape and size in South Beach, and that everyone has to, there's a space for everyone on the beach. And also age diversity. I wanted to make sure that, you know, not, as we were talking earlier in this room, not everyone that visits is in their early 20s. So that was an important factor as well. So now that I had the diverse talent, I wanted to move on to explore the rest of the destination and showcase more than what people were used to seeing. So from South Beach, we went all the way west to explore the Redlands. That is where the farms, our farmers grow fruits for the farm to table experiences of our restaurants. And one of these uh, families that are part of the, the talent or the, the community members are vegan bakers. So they buy their produce there. And they, this is how I actually learned so much about the destination by engaging the community. So we ended up with 23 different locations throughout Miami-Dade County, east to west, north to south, covering every aspect of it. And what resulted was an amazing sort of, uh, you know, storytelling through images from the beaches and what Rich and Cedric do with Tio on the weekend, what the vegan bakers do in Redlands to get their fresh produce for their restaurant, what the trans community does at Schnebli when they go tasting wines that are made from local fruits. So this was an amazing opportunity for me to actually get to know what I'm selling, what I'm marketing, what I want the people to know. And here, of course, are three gentlemen that are not in their early 20s. Just, they're you know, just a little older than I am, but they also have a place. They hang out at Juvia on Lincoln Road. And of course, we can't forget the thing that got everyone in Miami into everyone's mind, South Beach, and that feeling of riding down Loomis Park in, in the beach on rollerblades. 
But if you want to head away and you want to head to Alita and do some biking when you're completely alone, that was one of the questions that I always ask each of those people. I said, where do you like to go when you want to get away from it all? Because I wanted them to, you know, I wanted to know all these hidden secrets. You know, because everyone has this idea that there is sensory overload when you're in Miami. But there's actually beautiful, peaceful places that you can escape to. In the family that go, or the, the couple that goes on a romantic date to Española Way. So all this was, you know, lunch breaks on Lincoln Road, back when we used to actually go into the office. <laughs> In Wynwood, the neighborhood I mentioned earlier, and all of the amazing colors, and that, and they have really embraced the, you know, the, the queer community, and we now have Wynwood Pride that started three years ago, when there was really literally nothing there 12 years ago. Weddings, to this point, I can't believe it, but Miami had not spoken about weddings. So it really was an opportunity to speak not only to, you know, about weddings, but also about families. And back in the Redlands, you know, I wanted to show all sorts of, uh, you know, body types and ages. This is the visitor center in South Beach. And back to the vegan bakers in this beautiful sunflower seed. You would never imagine that this is in Miami, but it is. And it is about 45 minutes away from all the hotel inventory that takes, you know, that's in South Beach. So you can go and enjoy this and be back in your hotel in time for, for dinner. The art community. A lot of our community actually works for the Art Center, for the Paris Art Museum. And it was a great way to find out what they were doing, you know, what programming they were doing and highlight what they were doing in this, in this work. Again, to weddings and shopping. Of course, we, we all love shopping. <laughs> and some of our heritage neighborhoods, Little Haiti, another you know, uh, place that is a, a growing spot for the queer community. There is the home of the Villain Theater, is the only queer improv in the entire state of Florida. Back to the beach in Loomis Park and Loomis Beach and Muscle Beach, Little Havana, Little River, and the wonderful Azúcar ice cream in, on Calle Ocho on, in 8th Street. And that is, so I invite all of you to discover the new Miami, what we have been missing on our website at visitmiamilgbtq.com. Thank you very much. Have a seat. Have a seat for a minute. Okay. First of all, um, thanks. To, that was quite a. The, thanks for bringing us to speed on on the history there. Talk a little bit. What what is your official title, by the way? Director of LGBTQ marketing. Okay. So talk to me because we touched on this. This is like a rock skipping across a pond. This subject keeps coming up and it keeps going forward. When you have a destination like Miami, that is basically one of the legacy brands in tourism, in straight or gay tourism. It's, it's okay. just, it is, Miami Beach is a classic destination, not just in the US, but of the world, right? Uh, people all over the world want to come to Miami. What is the challenge when you have a destination that is, a, that is so well known in the minds of many when you try to change it versus starting from scratch uh, in, in a destination that isn't known, uh, like Cedar Rapids, for example. Again, I, I just want to keep using guys as, a, as an example. <laughs> no, but it's, I think it's a fair example. You guys are into this space for the first time. You've not been in the LGBTQ space before. Miami's always been kind of that way. Did you face any challenges of, pre of preconceived notions of what people thought about Miami, and how was it difficult was it to change? I face those challenges on every level. And one of the the primary things was the dreaded checklist that I, that I would, would say I've been there and I don't need to go back to Miami, I've been there. Been there, done that. Been there, done that. But also in particular with women, we were very successful with gay men, you know, cisgender gay men, and women did not feel welcome. And that's something that uh, I, I suspected because of you know, what we were looking at our visitor profile, but we worked with Tom and Dave at CMI to do some uh, sentiment uh, research and that came back. Forget trans and non-binary. That was not even existing on, in Miami. So that, yeah, it was a challenge, but it was also an opportunity. 
to really expose that because there, there are in Miami, there's everything. Now within the LGBTQ plus um, marketing sphere or advertising campaign, do you really break it down by letter to, to use Joey's phrase? I mean, are, are there specifics and, and how do you come up with the equation for how much to put toward each of those letters? It, it really depends on where we see opportunities in different audiences or different regions. If we're going to go to uh, advertise in the Northeast, I think that's a really good opportunity to speak to, you know, to the family and to the lesbian market. So we include that. But those are strategic decisions that we make as we go along. And without a doubt, every single letter of that initialism is represented in that work. So it gives us that flexibility. But I think that there are advantages in itself of having such a broad range because by having and displaying that, in, it, in and of itself, it, it positions us as an inclusive destination. So, uh, so for, for example, like you, of course, you're hyper aware of the trans uh, program that uh, Fort Lauderdale has started, right? In a very, yeah. very specific and overt, I think the first of its kind in the country to do something as overt. From a strictly nuts and bolts marketing, and, and there's only so much budget to, to go around, is, is a portion of LGBTQ in general proving to people who aren't that you are an open destination or is all of it really about drawing in the LGBTQ crowd? You understand what I'm getting at? No, right? no. Do you, do you think sometimes people will participate in LGBTQ2, LGBTQ2 advertising yeah, yeah. just to prove to the rest of the world how liberal and open they are, not necessarily have the message toward the LGBTQ crowd? You understand that? I, I do, yeah. I understand the question. I think it's a very fair question. And I think, yes, I think that they do. I think that there's value in doing so. I think there's value in positioning the brand. Exactly. In that way. So it's not necessarily saying, okay, 10% of the population is LGBTQ. So let's put 10% of our budget toward that and call it a day. That's correct. That's not part of it. There, in fact, but just to give you a little more of, of how we operate at the GMCBV, there is a budget that's allocated already for LGBTQ advertising. But what we've been finding is through the numbers that that segment, you know, or that portion, uh, the results there, they are allocating from general market more spend in LGBTQ platforms because of that. And are there initiatives when uh, straight and, and non-straight imagery are shown together uh, for mass market campaigns, or do you pretty much segment or compartmentalize those campaigns? We are selective about those images, but even downstairs now, you'll see images that are LGBTQ images. You know, that, that couple in Española Way is downstairs now with their baby, yeah. and they're part of the overall branding for Miami. And we just had one of the, um, you know, luminaries of, of Florida tourism, Bill Talbert, um, yeah. he, he retired and you have a, a new CEO yes. uh, and what I mean, do we expect any changes on, on this front from a marketing perspective? Have you had those discussions? Um, he's, he's very well regarded, too. Yeah, absolutely. And I worked with David before he, he left for Toronto. I have met with him. He is very supportive. I'm looking forward to the years ahead. Uh, and both David and Bill are here. So Bill is still engaged. Uh, he actually just arrived. My colleague was with me earlier, but he went to uh, meet Bill Talbert downstairs. And, and, and David is, has a history there, right? He was used to be part of the CVB. Yes, yeah. he was the uh, uh, senior VP of marketing. Right. So when I walked in in 2002, he was my boss. Wow, so you've been there almost 20 years. Almost 20 years. Yeah. And what, what is next for, the, what, how, how old is that campaign you just showed us? The one that I just showed you yeah. at the end is currently running. Those are and beautiful. Thank you. Yeah. Thank was, you. Was, very, very proud of that work. And it really, it set the groundwork for what's doing like that formula now we are we went to a different neighborhood historic overtown and right. we just finished the photo shoot last week uh, next week we'll be in the you know one of the hotels in miami beach and the axel beach which just opened about a year and a half ago and we want to showcase our partners as well and everybody in those shots live in miami it's their locals and their authentic lgbtq people yes but but this COVID thing happened and some did leave, okay. but at the time they were all residents. At the time, yes, right. Wow, absolutely. that's a pretty awesome thing. Yeah. Given how far you'd come from hiring, you know, buff models who may or may yeah. not even be LGBTQ, part of the, the community. Absolutely. Uh, to a space where it comes from the inside out, not the outside in. Yeah. What, what's the response been? It's been it's been amazing. It yeah. really has, and you know that that work. The, the budget was not, but it was the most comprehensive photo shoot that the GMCV ever did. That's, you know, 47 people to coordinate a photo shoot and then 23 scenes. So it was, it was quite a bit of work. 
How hands-on are you in, in that? Are, are you on scene with the, with the ad agency? Yeah. And you are there to make sure what was, what's happening is the vision that you have. Absolutely. Wow. That's, yeah. that's impressive. Yeah. That's, and you're fortunate to have a job where you can go that down into the weeds. Yeah. And I, I absolutely love it because I think that that's really, I, we became a family. Yeah. You know, and working together. So it was really bringing them to the space and actually in, enjoying the interaction. It, it, it was great. I think it was the familiarity that we had that led to the openness of those that that's reflected. I won't hold you to this, but I've always wanted to ask you this or someone in, at the um, uh, CBB this is just give, give me three because Key West and Miami and Fort Lauderdale. And they're all kind of like iconic gay destinations for kind of different reasons in yeah. different ways and different crowds. Can you give me a thumbnail for, from your perspective what the comparison and contrast is there? Yeah, I think that that's one of the things that I really love and appreciate about South Florida is that we're all so different. So I think that Miami has the, the real cosmopolitan feel that you know, the, you know, Fort Lauderdale has more of the neighborhood feel that we no longer have in South Beach, quite frankly. Um, and Key West is more of a, of a resort type of escape and getaway. So you really have a sense of departure when you go to Key West. You guys, I'm guessing, are about 90, in the 90% um, fly, fly drive or airlift in, correct? And you depend heavily on international visitors as well. Absolutely, but uh, the research has shown we weren't really looking at the drive market and the drive market is about a third. Interesting. So, yeah. so you're, you're feeling the sting from international right now, I'm sure, like we all are. Absolutely, uh, but we have, because domestic is up, we've com compensated because of the domestic. And does the domestic skew differently in, in your estimation in terms of age or, or uh, gender or any of those triggers? Well, uh, definitely shorter stays. Right. Uh, and Later bookings. Late, exactly, yeah. 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 And without a doubt, they, uh, it's, it's definitely younger. Wow. There's not a lot of families. You know, the, the Europeans travel with families. Right. And uh, Latin Americans as well. How long will this, the legs for this campaign be, do you think? I think it will continue to evolve. Okay. And I think that it has the, the potential to continue to grow. So as we continue to gather assets, we'll just uh, keep rolling them over. Now, depending on what uh, VML or agency has in mind, yeah. uh, but I think that the, the theme can, can merge as well into the- I think it's things. beautifully done, it's smartly done, and thank you for the history lesson there and, and the position, Gamayamani. Ladies and gentlemen, please give it up for Dan, that was awesome.